Welcome to this tutorial for Cambridge IGCSE examinations in ICT. Today we're going to be using for this tutorial Paper 3 of the May-June 2010 examination series. I would like to show you how to use a SUMIF function and discuss name ranges within a spreadsheet using Excel 2007. This is the question paper that we're going to be using today and if you can remember from tutorial 2 or spreadsheet tutorial 2 we have already completed question 45. So today I would like to do question 46 right through to question 48. The question that we're going to be tackling today involves using a sum if function. So in cell C11, use a function to add the total number of days. So we're going to try and count up all of the days of January and how long those months were or how long the duration times for certain things were for those particular months. Once we've been able to do that, we should replicate it. Again, it's going to bring into absolute and relative cell references. And then I'm going to show you how to print a certain range of, of um, cells for the examiner. This is the spreadsheet that we're going to be working on today and as you might remember from previous tutorials we've already completed the VLOOKUP which is where we looked for BAH and it gave us the answer of Bahamas and then we proceeded to video 2 or the tutorial 2 where we did the COUNT IF function. So question 46 is about a sum if. So if I scroll it down a little bit so we can have a little bit more of what we need to do. And the question says in C11 use a function to add the total number of days using the duration column. So basically what we're trying to do is looking through this duration column here we've got to find all of the number ones and then the numbers that would relate to that would be in the month column and then add them up. To make that a little bit more simpler, if we find these three eights, what we were trying to do for that month of August is add up these three numbers to find out the duration for that August. Okay, to co complete question 46, the first thing we need to do is make sure we're in cell C11. And then if we click on the FX button, as we discussed previously, if you're not sure what you're looking for, you can type in sum and then click the word go and it will bring you back the list of functions that you could possibly use. The one that we want to use today is called sum if. So if I click on sum if, again it gives you a description of what it's about and click OK. We now have the function arguments box up. So we can do these in any order, but I think I w want to do actually the criteria first because I can actually see it. So if I click in criteria and I click on the number 1, so B11, it represents 1, which means it's January. And the reason I clicked on the B11 is because at some point I'm going to replicate the formula. And so I want it to go to B12, which is number 2. B13 which is number 3 and so on. And if I just type the number 1 in there it would just show a 1 all the way down when I replicate it. Right, the next thing we need to do is the range. So if I click into range and it says it's the range of cells you want to evaluate. Well we want to look in this month column to find all the number 1's. So if I highlight that whole column and that should be the range and then the sum range I'll just move this box and we'll scroll up again the sum range would be the duration column so I'll click in here and highlight the duration column 
and so what it's done is we've looked in that cell for all the number ones in that range and then we've added them up where we found them in this column so as you see the answer is 28 so click OK and that is most of 46 now complete the thing that we need to can really consider is our absolute and relative cell references as in a previous video that was spreadsheet tutorial 2 we discussed absolute and relative cell references if you remember the cell references absolute had do dollar signs on it and relative didn't and we had to put it up here in the FX column so the easiest way to find out what we should do is if I click on it you can see that the green B11 is on this one B25 to B98 is on the month and then the purple one F25 to F98 is on the duration column so if I click the tick and we replicate and we click in the last one which is December this should help us figure out where we need to put the absolute cell references or the dollar signs on which particular references so if I click in here the green one is where it wants us to want where we would want it to be so it has started to move from 1, 2, 3 all the way down to 12 but the blue and the purple column seem to have gone so if we scroll down we can now see that they're actually on the move and if we keep going and find out where they finish we'll see that there is an awful lot of it those columns in empty space so that's not what we want to happen so we know at that point that the blue and the purple need to have dollar signs around them to make them absolute cell references and to actually stop them from moving so if I click on the tick go back to the 28 and if I highlight B25 to B98 and if you remember before it was F4 on the keyboard to put those dollar signs in and if we do the same to the purple again F4 and then click on the tick so if we replicate we probably will see some of these numbers changing because obviously some of them were outside the range okay if we click on 70 and click back into the FX box we see now that we've fixed the blue and the purple and they are not moving anymore so that is our absolute and our relative cell reference references with the only relative cell reference being here B11 to B22 okay the next thing we need to do is question 47 and 48 question 47 was to make sure that we set the page to uh, landscape so if I go to page layout and select orientation and put it in landscape and you can usually see the lines to tell you where the page splits over here so it says save the data model and print a copy of the cells A1 to C22 only if I go to the file part and go print preview you can see that it actually would print everything I'm just going to close that okay so we're going to do question 48 now so it's to save the data model and print a copy of the cells A1 to C22 only showing the formula used so the first thing we've got to do is change this to the formula view so if you click on formula and you say show formula and what you need to do here is make sure that you can see the complete formula because obviously if the examiner can't see the formula then he's not going to give you the marks because he's not going to know whether it's actually right or wrong so make sure they're all wide enough so you can completely see the formula and check it all the way down so it said we don't, we're only allowed to show 
cells A1 to C22. If I go File and Print Preview now, it will show everything and therefore we will lose marks on that. So to only show the area that you're actually looking for, if you highlight it, so A1 to C22 and then go into Page Layout and select or set the print area. And when you click out of it you should actually see a line around it. So if we go back to File and Print Preview again, that is the only area of the spreadsheet that it will now print. One of the other things that an examiner will t often talk about is using a named range cell. So they normally say that you're not allowed to use it. And I'm going to show you how one actually works because if they don't say that you're not allowed to use it, then it's very, very easy to do calculations with. So what I'm going to do here is we'll call this one named range. And we'll actually do the SUMIF formula, but, but using a named range. So what we need to do is have anything that's got a range in it actually give it some sort of a name. So we use the month column and we use the duration column. So I'm going to highlight the month column. And I'm actually going to give it a name. And I'm going to click up here and call it month. And hit enter to come out of that. So it's now named that whole column completely as month. We're going to do the same with the duration. And we're going to call that one duration. So this is called month and this is called duration. And now when we do our sum if, so if we go fx and sum if is there because it's the last one that we used and we'll say OK, we'll use that. And if we remember the criteria was the one because we were trying to find all of the Januaries. And the range, if I highlight the month, should actually change to the name month and the sum, sum, the sum range should actually do the same. I'm going to start from the bottom because it will be much quicker. And it's called duration. And why the examiner doesn't want you to particularly use this is if you look in the FX box it says month B11 duration. So when you do a name range cell, you don't actually require absolute cell references. So when I click OK and I replicate, I don't have to worry at all about dollar signs. So it does make the sum if and the count if and any of these functions much, much simpler if you use a named range. But often, the examiner won't want you to use them. Now all of our named ranges are contained within the formula section and in the name manager. So if I click on name manager, it shows you everything that's been named. So if you gave a name to something and you mistyped it or you picked the wrong range and you wanted to get ri rid of it, you just simply click and delete the named range. And then you follow the same process as I did at the very start to actually name the range again. And you see once we delete the name ranges it makes the formulas invalid or because they don't know where they should be looking. It's, they can't find those names. So hopefully you've learned something about absolute and relative cell references and also about using the name manager to define names and create um, create name ranges. Thank you for watching.